I use iTunes quite a bit to play my favorite songs. One of my favorite bands is Green Day. And what I like to do when I use iTunes is I like to make my own compilation albums. And when I make a compilation album, I like to make a compilation album cover. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how I made a cover very similar to this one. This is one of my favorite bands, Green Day, and I made this cover on iTunes. So if you're interested in making these sort of designs, I'm going to show you how to do this in Inkscape for free. Okay, so if you're new to Inkscape, it may be a little intimidating. You're looking at a, just a blank screen like this with menus along the left, menus along the right, and menus along the bottom. Let's first of all figure out about this art palette here. What I want to do is make it a thousand by a thousand pixels, and that's going to form my album cover for my iTunes album. So I'm first going to go into File and Document Properties. A new window is going to open up just like this, and now I'm going to make sure I click on this Page button, okay? And that page button, I can change the color of my page. So I'm going to make it nice and bright green, just like that. I'm going to close this out. And then the other thing I want to do is change the actual size of my page as well. So I'm going to click on the format, and I can just change this now to pixels. And I'm going to change this to 1,000 by 1,000. You can make it 700 by 700 or 2,000 by 2,000, but I'm just going to make it the same so that it becomes a square. So we can see now it's going to look like it's a square just like that. The other thing you can do is if you want to get rid of this checkerboard, you can just simply uncheck the checkerboard. And then there's also a border and it's very subtle. You may not be able to see it in this video, but there's a little border that runs around. You can have that on or off. It just is a border that shows. It won't look like that when you export it. The other thing you may want to do is I've got my background is gray. Now I have this because it's sometimes easier to see in a video, but if you wanted to change it, you go to file, document properties, and then the desk option is right here. So I'm going to click desk and then you can change the color of your desk. So you could make this white, black, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to make it white just so we can see it here, kind of mimic what's going on in real life. So now this is my page. Okay, that green album cover square now is my page. So next up, I'm going to import a picture into my design here. So I'm going to go file, import. And when I select my image, it's going to ask me to import from file. That's what I want to do. And I want to do smooth, which optimizes the quality. So you just leave these as the default and you click OK. Now what I'm going to do with this picture, I'm going to just kind of stick it kind of on top of the photo here. But I'm going to go path and I'm going to go trace bitmap. Now it's going to look at what I've selected. So make sure your picture is selected. And over on the right hand side, we'll see brightness cut off 45. I'm going to click update preview and we'll see the update preview down at the bottom. You can make this more or less dark. So if I were to change this up to say 75 or 80 and I click update preview, you'll see it becomes very, very dark. Same thing if I were to bring this right down to say 14 or 15 percent, it'll be very, very light. So there's no right number for this. You just have to sort of figure out what works for you. I typically start around 50. I'll click update preview and I'm like, yeah, that works pretty good. I'll click apply. And now we can see there's an update right here. I'm going to click my photo. I'm going to delete it. And now this is going to form the basis of my artwork. So I'm going to make sure that this is nice and big. So I'm going to click on the photo, which is now my traced image. I'm going to hold down the control key and that locks in the aspect ratio. And now I can make this larger and smaller. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. I'm going to move it like this. Now anything that's outside of the page, the green square, that's not going to be exported. So I'm happy with the way that looks. You can move it around as needed. Now what I'm going to do is grab a logo. Okay, so I like using 1000logos.net. Again, I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about selling anything in this video. This is for a personal project for myself. So if you're looking at this thinking, wow, I can make Green Day t-shirts, please don't make Green Day t-shirts. Those are going to be violating trademark. But here we've got some pretty high res scans. Uh, it totally depends on what band you're looking up or what company you're looking up. Here, for example, we've got lots of different Green Day logos. You can also just Google image. So you can search under Google. I typed in Green Day logo and I just type and I just click the search button, which is the little images button there. If I click all, that's going to show me all different websites, but I'm clicking images. And now that'll just give me a nice image search and you could search through as well and you could pick different styles. Here is Wikimedia Commons. I like using this as well. And we can see there's another website called PNG item. That's actually where I grabbed the one in the example that I'm showing you. So I like PNG item as well. I simply click the download button here and I can download it. It just takes a second. It says you download should start automatically. If not, please click here. And then here is my image. So there's lots of different options how you can grab logos online. 
Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing now with the logo. I'm going to go File and Import. It's going to give me the exact same options as before. I'll click Smooth. I'll click OK. And now it's going to give me the logo. Make sure to hold down the Control key when you go into the corner and that'll keep the aspect ratio fixed. So you're going to click it once, hold down the Control key, and then you can make this larger or smaller. And then I'm going to use the Text tool now. So over on the left-hand side, I've got the Text tool. I'm going to click it. I'm going to drag it over the album cover and I'm going to start typing. So I'm going to say volume one. Now you may have trouble seeing it when if it's black font on a black album cover. So you just want to do control A to select all and then make sure the font is white. So I'm going to click the little white button down at the bottom. That'll make the font white. I can also make the font larger. So I'm going to make it 144. Now if it disappears, it just means your box is too small. So make sure to increase your box. So I'm going to drag the box and make it a bit bigger. There it is. And then I'm going to pick my font that I like as well. So I've got a whole bunch of fonts on my computer. I'm a total font hoarder. I'm going to scroll on down and I'm going to pick veneer. I really like that style of font. I'll just simply click outside of it and now this becomes my font. I'm going to hold down the control key again. I'm going to make sure that this is larger here. So I'm going to click volume one. I'm going to make sure this is larger just like that. And I just remembered I'm actually doing volume three. So I'm just going to click back inside the box. I'll make it volume three instead. And I'm going to put a little period there. Now if you wanted to put this on top of the Green Day, you could just like that. But you could also move it underneath using layers. Okay, so what you're going to do is down at the bottom, you're going to see layer. And everything here is on layer one. But you could move the text underneath the image. So what I've done is I've selected the layer button down at the bottom. And then I'm going to push this text underneath. And you'll see now it just disappeared. So I'm going to push it in the middle in between image text and path. So now when I'm moving this, you'll see it falls underneath the Green Day logo. Now I don't want that in this case, so I'm just going to push the text above the image. And now you can see the Green Day logo is underneath. So you can flip around these. You can also rename them. If you want to name any of the layers, just simply double click the name. So for example, the when it says text one, I could type in this volume three and that tells me that's what that layer is. Same thing here with this image. It's actually the logo. So I'm going to type in Green Day logo as the text. And then here for path, when I select it, you'll see that's the three boys there in Green Day. So I'm going to type in band. So again, you don't have to do this. The other thing you can do as well is if you're trying to select the Green Day logo and as you click it, you wind up moving the guys. It's like, whoops, so I've selected the wrong thing. You can lock in the layer as well. So I'm going to click the little lock icon and now I can't move the guys at all. I can still move the actual logo, but if I'm happy with the way that looks, I'll lock that too. And now the only thing I can move is the third layer, which is volume three. I'll put it just like that. Okay, so when you're ready to export this, you want to export the page in this case. And I'm going to click over on the right-hand side, the little page that has an outbound arrow on it. It's called Open Export. And when I click on it, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. So you want to make sure you're not exporting the document. That'll export everything. You want to make sure you're not exporting the selection because if you haven't selected anything, nothing will export. You want to export the page. And it will look like this. It'll say 1000 by 1000 and then 96 DPI. Because I'm going to change this now to 300 DPI, it'll actually change the width and the height in pixels. Now the background color that we've used here, the bright green, if I click on File and Document Properties, you'll see the page now has been selected as green. So when I click on it, it's going to give me a hex value here. It's going to be 113 by 100 by 50. And there's also this RGBA. I'm going to just copy that. So you're going to close that out. And if you want the exact same green, then over here on the export page, you want to click background color. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. So over here on the right, I'm going to do paste. And it'll be the exact same color. You'll see it update down on the bottom, which is really important. You want to make sure that it's updated. So what I typically do is I export it as a JPEG. So I'm going to make sure that my JPEG option is selected. It's going to say bitmap JPEG. And now when I select export, 300 dots per inch. Click export. And we can see here is the actual, it's a JPEG file, 3125 by 3125. And there it is. I think that looks really good. Okay, so once you've created your album, once you're in iTunes, you may get something like this. So even though I've created a compilation album, I've got my old artwork set up because it's just picking one of the other albums that it may be on. So to fix it, it's pretty easy to do. You're going to go into iTunes. You're going to look at the album cover. You're going to right click on the album cover and you're going to go into get info. 
And then from here, there is an artwork tab located right there. And you're gonna click the artwork tab, and then down at the bottom, you're gonna have an option here to add artwork. And then in my actual PC, in my folder, I've created the graphic. I'm just gonna simply double click it, and now I'm gonna add it. I'll click OK. Now it's not gonna update right away, but if I go out and I go back in, so now I'm going back into iTunes, into the artist, it'll just update. Kind of weird, but that's how it works. I hope you found this video helpful. I like using iTunes a lot, and this is a fun personal project. Again, not for commercial use. I do not recommend selling this stuff. But if you're making cool album covers for iTunes, you can look like a hero, and then they look great on your phone too. Hope you found this video helpful.